I'm Margaret and I'm going to show you how to take uh, semi-ripe cuttings of rosemary today, which is a herb. Um, we will end up, once the cuttings have rooted, and it usually takes anything from 6 to 12 weeks, um, with something like this in a wee pot. In the meantime, in that 6 to 12 weeks, the cuttings will be sitting on the cuttings bench, which you can see here. Um, the cuttings bench is a sand base and underneath the sand there is a heated cable. You don't have to have that, but giving the cuttings some bottom heat actually helps them to root. In the bench here we've got box cuttings inserted directly into the sand. They'll be there for a wee while because they take a bit longer to root. And in modules here okay. we've got pineapple sage, variegated sage, lemon verbena, and French tarragon and all those are a bit quicker to root and I expect to be potting them up in the next two weeks. So to start off with the tools that you need to take cuttings. To remove cuttings from the plant you'll need scissors, secateurs or whatever. Um, when you come to taking the cuttings you need a knife. The kind of knife that you need is preferably one with a straight blade. If you have one with a curved blade, you mash the cutting as you're taking it. So go for a straight bladed knife. The knife has to be sharp, so we use an oil stone. If you check your knife, if it's the right kind, it'll have be sharpened on one side only. So make sure your knife is good and sharp. Sharpening it on the correct side and finish off on the other side, which just takes off any little burrs of metal that might have got on the surface. The other really important thing is to keep your tools clean. Diseases are spread from plant to plant, usually by dirty tools, and viruses in particular can get into a plant this way. So we actually use methylated spirit any kind of alcohol will do that you can spare and just wipe the blades over before and at the end of each session of taking cuttings particularly important for the knife so there we are that's all ready to go I'm taking a plastic bag with me to take the cuttings and that is so that they don't dry out too much between the plant and the cuttings bench we'll go now and find the cuttings Okay, this is an upright rosemary, although it tends to like falling over. We can take two kinds of cuttings from it at this time of year. We can take tip cuttings on semi-ripe wood, or we can take heel cuttings. Try to get your cuttings taken by the, about the middle of August, and then it gives the rosemary plenty of time to settle in uh, before the winter when it stops growing. So first of all, tip cuttings are very straightforward. Take more than you're going to insert in the pot, and it doesn't really matter where you take them from. So just give the bush a good prune as we're going along. Straight into the plastic bag. For the heel cuttings, you don't need the secateurs. Here you're taking growth that's coming away from the main stem simply by taking a hold of it and peeling it off and you can see it's called heel cutting because there's a little heel on the end when you finish so we'll have a few of those there we go one two you have to look a little bit harder for suitable material for heel cuttings don't have to edit this bit Andy <laughs> right it's important what you put the cuttings into. Cutting compost can be bought um, or you can make your own, but it needs to be what we call sharp. Um, to add the sharpness to this compost, I've used a 50% mix of perlite, which is the white material, and ordinary seed compost. Mix the two together, make sure it's not too dry. I'm going to use modules for my rosemary cuttings. So fill the modules. This kind of module tray is hollow at the bottom, so you have to make sure that 
each one of the little modules is pressed down firmly otherwise the compost will just fall out again. Once it's pressed down firmly you top it up. Another little press, especially the ones on the edges there, they never get as much compost as the other ones do. Right, here's your heel cutting and there's a, a bit on the end that needs to be trimmed off first of all, just so that it doesn't start to rot. Take off the lower leaves. The more leaves that you leave on, the more chance there is of the cutting drying out. So you only leave it with a few leaves. It can be quite unkind to it. What you've got at the bottom of the cutting there is a wide surface area which will form something called a callus. Callus formation is the first step to producing roots and unless callus forms you don't get roots. So the better the area for callus formation the better rooting you're going to get from each cutting. Now I'm using a hormone rooting powder. You don't have to use hormone rooting powder. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. I'm just dipping the cutting in shaking it off, you really don't need too much and then using the dibber on the end of the rooting powder which is the most useful thing about it to make a hole in the centre of the module. Insert the cutting, firm the compost around it. Okay, It's very important that you don't just stick the cutting in. If you do that you'll just damage that area that you've just prepared. So here we go with another root cutting, I'll do this one quickly, trim off the end. Move some leaves, quick dip and into the compost. Ideal size for cuttings of rosemary, two to three inches, not more than that. The first one I did is a bit on the tall side. Okay. Now the shoot tip cuttings. What you want to do here is decide how long you want the cutting to be and make a cut just underneath a leaf node. What I'm going to do is choose that one there and take quite a short cutting. So I've cut straight across underneath. If you cut at an angle that's fine, that um, works better with with alternate rods. Take off the lower leaves, there's the cutting prepared. Again, a little bit of rooting powder. Firm it in. Another one. This one I'll make a little bit longer and I'll cut just below this leaf node, straight across. Remove the leaves. and into the compost. When you've got your tray of cuttings complete and you've got as many as you need, you need to put it onto your propagating bench and give it a good water. In a heated bench you water the surface of the bench and you water the cuttings as well. Heat um, is provided by a thermostat um, which I've got set at about 12 degrees. Some cuttings need a little bit more, some don't need as much heat as that. Finally, to stop the little cuttings from drying out, we cover them. This prevents moisture from escaping. You don't need to come in spray them, just occasional watering with a, a misting nozzle uh, and if it gets too hot, too sunny, you can provide some shade by putting a bag over the top of them and that will keep them from drying out into nice.